there are rumors now that he is potentially on the trading block. Chris, do you put any stock in those? Well, right now, the rumors are more media created. And I'm a, you know, guilty of it myself. I wrote about it uh, yesterday on SI.com. The Lakers have not shown any interest in trading Kobe. Kobe has said publicly he has no desire to be traded. And that's really the last, you know, the final line. Kobe has veto power. He's a no trade clause. So if he doesn't want to go, he can't go. But I want to hear what the conversations are like in January and in early February when this team is like 20 games under 500 and looked like they could challenge for 15, 20 wins uh, at the end of the regular season. That's when I want to see where Kobe's head's at. I know where he's at right now when he's saying to himself, I want to be one of those guys that spends his entire career with one team. I want to be Magic or John Stockton or Malone or Larry Bird or even Tim Duncan of this era. I want to be one of those guys. But when you're looking down the barrel of two years, that could be really, really bad. And this year, you know, this year's bad, but next year, we don't know what it could look like either. You may change your tune a little bit. If a team like the Knicks, if they can put together some kind of deal, they've got big expiring contracts, they've got a couple of decent young pieces, now that Masai Ujiri is done fleecing them, basically, they've got some draft picks down the road. Uh, you know, they could be an appealing team in a month or two months from now when these losses really start to pile up. Clearly, there's a Phil Jackson co Obviously. connection. There's a Genie bus to Phil Jackson connection, but I can't help. Over dinner, a little candlelight, you know, <laughs> pillow honey. talk. I can't help but think that for all the miscues that the Lakers front office has done and that the fans are fed up that they would trade away the star player to but, New York. But do you think that would be a miscue? And I think that the real Laker fans, the passionate Laker fans, will understand what the end game here is. And it's not the same. I know it's not the same with Paul Pierce in Boston, but Paul Pierce was an icon in Boston. Paul Pierce played 15 years there. He'll go down as one of the greatest Celtics of all time. I go back to Boston a lot. The fans there are not livid at the team for trading away Paul Pierce. They understand that this was a means to an end. Pierce and Garnett, they'd reached their end as far as uh, where, how far they could go in terms of winning. They traded them away. They got cap relief. They got young players. They got draft picks. They're in a far, far better position than the Lakers are right now. I'm not advocating for trading Kobe just for expiring contracts. The Lakers have had cap space the last summer. They've got cap space again this summer. That's not the issue. But if you can get a young player, if you can get a future pick that can build your team for the next step in this, uh, this franchise, I think at the very least, you have to consider it and you have to have that conversation with Kobe to see where his head's at in January or February.